in Staten Island picking up motor number one. It's big, big twin, 30 horsepower, big twin. She is big. Not a long shaft, so I can't use it for my boat, but we'll be able to test it. A little corrosion in the, in the lower unit, but we'll clean that up. It's big. We're gonna have some fun. Okay, I couldn't wait. I had to get it up on the device and just check it out. The thing is a beast. It's so effing big. 30 horsepower, big twin. So I just wanted to pop the hood off and see what we were dealing with. I actually can't fit it in the shop. Johnson, but I don't think I ever had that in the cellar because it was summertime. It's the biggest hood ever. <laughs> so here she is in all its glory. First thing I'm noticing is how salt water corroded it is. Uh, a lot of rust. Don't know if it was left outside. Second thing I'm noticing is this looks like it was aftermarket. Not aftermarket, but not to this motor. You can tell. Flaky paint. Never a good sign. Uh, but if you take the paint away, you are revealing a red color here. Uh, that may mean that this was all flaked away already. Or maybe when he got it, they sandblasted it and brought it down to the base metal color. It looks good. I got a bolt. Random bolt sitting there. I hope that's not to the power head. Let's see. That make y'all sick? That won't look like it. Some rust here. It looks to be in pretty rough shape. Twenty five oh two two. That's the serial number, which indicated this is a thirty horsepower. Something going on with the head. So I think it overheated in the past, which happens. Um, but they obviously went through the trouble to fix it. But why did they not put it back in service? Some rust dripping down here for some reason. A random bolt missing on the flywheel. So maybe work was done to it at some point. Another bolt taken out there. Maybe they lost spark and compression and wanted to check it. So being that we have... Uh, this setup here, maybe we will check for compression. That'd be our first step. Uh, I want to get this bolt out of here. My guess is one of the things. So let me get that bolt out of there. Pop the spark plugs off. We'll check inside the cylinder and see what we got. And we'll pop the rope pull start off too. Came out of there, fell to the bottom. There's one missing here as well. Doesn't look like it's in the bottom of this one. And you can see it's got some oil on it. Uh, it looks like it might have been reused. He said it was stored for 30 years. So, not really sure what's going on there. Hopefully we won't have to take any of these bolts out. And we'll see how it cools and everything. Uh, so, first look on. I'm not impressed. I'm not disappointed or scared. I'm always scared, but... Let's get those plugs out and see what's up. Alright, so... I was looking at the spark plug wires and they look pretty new. Being that there's a sign that this was off, I said, let me test for spark. I got bright blue spark in both already. So that tells me this was worked on, and it does have spark already. So we're going to run right to the fuel section. We'll clean the carb and see where we're working with there. Uh, the inside of the cylinders look okay. A lot of carbon built up on the top of the pistons. Uh, so we can always throw some sea foam to fix that. 
Uh, so we're going to check compression and then clean the carburetor since we already have spark. So we got good compression. We got good spark. We got good wires. I won't even check the coils yet. We'll get the carburetor off. We'll. We could just pop the lower unit off. Check the gear oil. This thing might start right up. I guess we're going to find out. Our unit's in rough shape. Just a lot of salt water pitting. But we'll drain the gear oil, see if there's water in it. I have to pop the lower unit off at some point. I'm just curious to see if it runs first. This, uh, this motor's just one of those motors just just got some hours. Look at that nasty. Real nasty. But maybe we can clean it up and give her a paint job or something. So, we take our 916 bolt out here. Obviously, same story. Uh, 716 here, and then the side plate. And it should slide out. And it does. Which is a biggie. No o ring. Um, it's painted some like aftermarket blue and the bolts weren't seized in there so they said he was a mechanic kept up with it I think they might have been actually telling the truth for once or at least knew the guy well enough um, it's not awful not great it's not awful <laughs> what's really interesting is the water pump housing only has two bolts in it is the third one supposed to go there I mean, it is dirty. This is all salt water. You guys want to know what salt does to a motor? All these white particles, it's like salt, just uh, dust after it dries up. And there's a little uh, retaining ring for something. I know what that, I know what it's for. There's a hook on something in there, I'm not sure. See, see the hole where the drive shaft went? It's right there. I'm looking for my O-ring. I wonder if it's still in there. Just broke off. I got hooked on something on the way out. Wasn't sure what it was. Yeah, so this is the inside of an outboard. And we'll see what this impeller looks like. The scariest part of all of these. I've got these outboards. I strip these all the time. Especially the ones that have been used in salt water. They never come out. I'm happy there's only two. Gift to not be a klutz. Yeah, I can feel it. I'm gonna strip it. Just break it off and get it over with. I can spray WD 40 and let it sit. It's gonna strip anyway. Never fails with these. Okay, it broke. Every time. If you're gonna buy a used outboard on Craigslist, prepare for the bolt to strip out. You break. Not necessarily strip out the threads, but just break. The bolt will break. Okay. Makes the project ten times more difficult. A little nudge with the impeller. With the impeller. Maybe a little nudge with the rubber mallet. That plate is not bad. Looks like somebody did strew lots of dirt. And then yeah, just your typical just nasty salt corrosion. A lot of it. It's dirty. Hasn't been changed in a while. I want to be careful with this plate because I don't have another one. Get my key out before I lose that. I have to get this pin out so that I can pull the plate off. Here it comes. It's little, don't lose it. But I believe the kit comes with it. Right, there you go. Pull this plate off, inspect it. Take a look at my drive shaft seal. Which is just a monster. One, two, three. Okay, so. It does look like there was four holes in this. But I guess he could only get two to go. Uh, 
I'm going to clean them out and see if we can get probably the original one. Okay, so that took some heat to get off. Uh, didn't strip the whole screw, but pretty much not much teeth left. But it wouldn't spin otherwise, so I had to had to heat it up to loosen it up. Still working on this guy, heating it up. It's just a regular butane torch, propane propane torch. They make uh, the the yellow cans are hotter. Probably better application. So I'm having trouble getting this cotter pin out, and then I got to figure out a way to spin that off. I got the, I took the prop all out. So we're gonna have to find a way to maybe put a vice grips on there and hold that maybe in the vice or something. Uh, but that's where we're at. So luckily the skeg's apart and all done. Uh, this is just grease. This guy was a mechanic. So he figured F the seals, I'll just throw grease in there, pack it full. And this is, hey buddy, this is all just old grease and I started to scrape some of it away to see what I'm dealing with. So hopefully the gears are in good shape. They're just packed with grease because why mess with uh, gear oil when you can just pack it with grease and then uh, nine times out of 10, everything will stay okay. It's just not the way it's supposed to be done. So we'll uh, take everything apart, clean it up, and then we'll see about paint and everything. But the lower unit's coming apart. Uh, eventually, very soon, we're going to start uh, diving into the upper half. I cannot wait. I'm normally not a cleaning guy, but I cannot wait to clean all this up and see what this looks like. Fresh and solid. Because it is ruining my whole workstation. All my rags are messed. All my gloves are messed. All, I mean, gloves are messed. I picked up something that I wasn't even... It's getting on my tools because I'm touching my tools after touching my gloves. These were clean hands. Just picking up a tool that was clean with the grease. So this is just a mess. Mess, mess, mess. Cannot wait to clean this junk. All right, guys. So I was just peeling this thing apart. I started to clean it up a little bit. And, you know, the grease is obviously really packed in there. The pinion gear came out with a bearing on the top of it. Whereas the 56 I worked on before had like a thin uh, shaft and then the, the ball bearings around it. This one's got the same thing, but it's wider and it's got like a regular bearing uh, around a regular whatever. So I'm not really sure. And then I'm starting to wonder if maybe this is meant to be packed with grease. So I have to do some research and find out what they used to do back in, this is a 50, this is a 56, I think. I'm pretty sure the last one I had was a 56 as well. Uh, but same motor, different variation. So I got to research and find out if this was normal. Uh, obviously the gear setup is fine, but I maybe grease was a thing. Not sure, pretty sure it was supposed to be oil, but this opening is very wide. I don't remember the other one being so wide. I thought it was a little, little shaft and the pinion bearing had a little shaft. You squeezed it in with the ball bearing stuck. You guys remember the video. So I'm going to do a little bit more research, find out what's supposed to go here. Because this, this is just so packed with grease. I'm starting to think now, look how little grease that I just pulled out just from the, the pinion bearing, the pinion gear. So I'm starting to think maybe this is how it was supposed to be. It's not supposed to be like that. It's gear oil. I confirmed it. It's gear oil, not grease. The verdict. This is what I pulled out of the gear case, the gears. Uh, and then the two bearings that were on the ends that are not typical to what I'm normally seeing. And then obviously the clutch dog and another bearing, and there's the, the shaft itself. I still gotta get the pin up, uh, but we're working. We're gonna clean it up, and, and uh, we're getting there, step by step. Okay, we decided to bring the 30 horsepower into the daylight. <laughs> and we're gonna do my typical uh, open up the seal. Let me try, let me try, let me try. Like the ship rod seal, whenever the skeg comes off the bottom, is really easy to get out. 5 16 rod right through the bottom. Usually you gotta flip these upside down. Five sixteenths thread a row. There's your bushing. Now, don't quote me on this. There's other videos. I could have swore you usually. I could have swore you pop these upside down and bang them out that way. Don't quote me again. It is a fifty-six big twin. Put the lower unit right side up. 15, uh, 5 16 starter rod, bang out. The whole bushing is going to come out. All right, and you're ruining the bushing to an extent, but you're going to be fine. The seal's on the inside, so you just get it off, get it off the threaded rod, and then you reinstall the other way with the new seal. Piece of cake. The shift rod bushing on these lower units are my favorite because they're so simple.
comes right off the threaded rod. And you just install the new seal. Add the bushing you save. You save the bushing. This brass bushing, you save. Everything on the inside, new. It's gonna get cleaned up real nice. Grease, just nasty grease everywhere. That seal's coming out with the seal puller. I'll show you how. And I'm using this makeshift. It's expensive, but it's very generic and I don't wanna say cheap, but it's a cheap seal puller. And it's complicated because it's tricky. It's a simple design. It's just annoying in its trickiness. So, what I found works best. Okay, now bear with me. Get the feet close to the base. Get your adapters. Once the feet are not tight, not too tight, because you gotta stick the seal. This has gotta fit through the seal. So if you put it through the seal and then tighten the nut too much, this will come up because you haven't extended the jaws on the seal puller. So what you gotta do is get it through, okay? Once it's through, open it up a little bit by holding this and tightening this. So you hold this, tighten this, that'll pull the jaws open just to get you set. Then you get the feet in position and you screw the nut down to where this doesn't come up yet once you're at the perfect point where the feet at least stay where they're supposed to go, because if you're fighting with the feet trying to get this inside the seal, the feet are gonna slip. And come try three, you've had enough where you're gonna throw the lower unit into the next eBay universe. So, get the seal in, open her up, get the feet in position, tighten a little, then tighten this to where the jaws open up and grab it, and then, you see how it's still loose, but I'm ready to start tightening this nut. Once everything's lined up and go, then you tighten the nut and the seal should come out. And we'll see if we're lucky. A lot of setup went into getting here. Uh, I'd say I've been playing with this thing for about a half hour. It's my second seal I'm using this on too. So it's, it's not like I've done this a hundred times where I'm like, okay, I'm a pro. I don't even think it's gonna work to tell you the truth. So I was tightening the nut and everything was nice and good. And then all of a sudden it got loose. We're gonna, what's the problem? Something tells me it like happened last time is the seal puller beat past the seal. All right. Okay, it looks like the seal, the puller is pulling the seal out, but the seal's stuck in there. And most likely, the puller will come past the seal. Yeah, okay, so I've had this problem before. <laughs> so the jaws were open and they were pulling the seal, but what they do is they skip past the rubber, especially if the seal is solidified in there. So we're gonna take another stab at this with maybe a bigger seal, or worst case scenario is I'll take, I'll take a screwdriver and I'll just go, I'll go in with a screwdriver like this and I'll pry up on this side, pry up on that side, and this seal will come out. You just gotta be careful not to damage the outer rim here where the, the, the water pump housing sits. Here I just, uh, I heat it up and I babble about lower units and nothing important. Uh, so I'm just gonna heat it up here and uh, I also heat up the impeller housing bolts to try to loosen them. Uh, and then I pry it up and out with a screwdriver. That's what happens when they're Motor's so old, the original seal. It just they stick. But then get a little lucky. Yeah, see? Sometimes you're just gonna pop to one side, you can work it back and forth, back and forth. A lot of times I find that to work. Um, with the with this one, this was too this was just too old, so I got lucky and I I was here. You know, you you, you hit the max with the side. So there's a gap here. Worked it that side. Worked it that side. There's two. And 
here she comes. I think the screwdriver is better than the puller. Let me tell you. The screwdriver is better than the puller. Oh, yeah, you beat the heck out of it. Let us out. Got her. Get out of here. Get time for y'all buzz. Oh, uh, it's still super hot. Just want to get in there and clean up the seal. How's it going to see what it looks like? Yeah, super hot. And who knows, if I didn't heat it up, who knows if it would have came out. I mean, it was breaking. I don't know if you heard it. It popped a couple of times. Um, but no matter how much you beat that, this ring here, the main part is the rubber on the inside of the new seal and this surface area of the outside because the, the new seal's got to fit and seal on the, around the outside. We, we can use gasket sealing compound for that. And the rubber, as long as you don't damage the new thing, the new seal on the inside, then we're good. All right, so, long, boring story short. Seal's out. Use a big screwdriver. It's almost easier. F this crap. F the right way. No, I'm just kidding. Now, if you get a newer motor where somebody took care of it, or if it's your own motor for first sake, you bought the thing new and you're just trying to upkeep the thing, which I'd be surprised if it was a 50s, but hey, teach his own. Yeah, no, the seal puller, should, you know, if you've done it right, seal puller, the seal should pull right out, especially if you use gasket sealing compound. When you put it in, it'll create a barrier slash anti C so it doesn't stay stuck. That's official. So the lower unit's bare. Now we can clean it up. Woohoo! I have never power washed a lower unit. And I have the power washer right there. I should use it, but we'll just use the hose. But this is definitely a first for me. I've never sprayed down. This thing is so dirty. Still mix. <laughs> so if you're like, what a dumbass, he's spraying water into a grease filled container which it is filled. When I mean filled, it is filled. He's like, what does he plan on doing? The grease ain't gonna, it's not gonna mix, no, but it'll just clean it up where we can get a rag in there at least. So I know, this thing is nasty. I don't even know how to use Bondo, but it might look like we're gonna have to learn. And voila, one very dirty, but very clean <laughs> lower unit. Oh man, it looked nice though. You can see what you can see down in there now. I really kind of get an idea what's going on. Hey, look, the shift staff seal hole is uh, visible. It's not caked with grease. Look at this grease. Look at this grease. I mean, I just showed the 64, or I will be posting the 64, where uh, the fishing line was so god awful. Look at this. This is a clean lower unit. I just washed it. Look at my hands. The grease, this guy packed it with grease. The guy was just a mechanic and tried to beat the system and pack it with grease instead of sealing it the right way so best case scenario is uh we have the seals out we'll put a new seal in there and good uh, yeah it looks like crap but let's get it i'm excited i'm having fun here so we were able to get the prop off the third the 30 horsepower is proving to be a worthy adversary prop came off with some love from a big effing channel lock the hole for the shear pin is widened a little bit, so it's a little loose. Eh. Uh, the prop shaft itself looks okay. The threads are a little beat on the, the end where the prop nut goes. This is where the prop shaft seal is in. This piece looks to be in bad shape. And it's got a little, I guess that's melted rubber from the outside. I don't know if the seal, I gotta look, I gotta go online and do some research. I don't know if this is the seal itself, this metal hole housing that just fits over the prop. That'd be nice, I doubt it. Okay, um, the prop, other half of the prop came out. All these fun pieces, I have no idea what order they go in. You know, obviously one's a pinion gear, one's a reverse gear. There's the, the clutch dogs right there in the middle. And then this one has bearing uh, carriers. So no uh, no roller bearings, which is nice. There's the uh, the, the cradle, clutch cradle, shift shift cradle. Uh, so I just don't know, I'm not familiar with those bearings. I don't know if I have to repack them with grease or what. Uh, there's not that many pieces to it. So prop came off, there's the shaft. Okay, I had to force this piece off. That was the seal. The seal's in there. I don't know if the seal comes out of there. We're going to do some research. Uh, then the bearing. Then the uh, forward or reverse gear. It was on this side. I think it's the reverse gear. Thrust washer's in there. There's a snap ring on there. Uh, a lot more pieces than I'm used to. I'm used to working with the smaller ones. 
It's just usually like one unit, a couple gears, and that's it. Uh, prop looks to be in pretty decent shape. Just gotta clean everything up and then find out if I gotta pack these bearings with grease. Uh, but again, the 30 horsepower, not that it's difficult, but you know, I'm learning as I go and definitely more into it. Uh, if I can make a suggestion on drill bits, you know, like everybody else, I go to Home Depot, I go to these places, my wife gets me presents, and I get the standard oxidized drill bits. And every time I try to drill in the metal, they snap, break every time. I went on uh, Amazon, picked up these. I don't know that brand, not sure. Uh, it says professional. They weren't all too expensive. Uh, I've been drilling through metal three, four different times now. Not one broke on me so far, and I'm actually getting work done. Uh, I was always saying how difficult it is to get... Uh, if these are seized in there, how to drill them out and everything. With these drill bits, it's actually not that bad. It drills into the metal fairly easily, being aluminum. Uh, but even the screws themselves, I'm, I'm having not as difficult a time getting a center, drilling through the center, and either extracting them or just drilling it out and re-tapping. So if I could recommend drill bits, I would either go with these or definitely the reverse ones. These are the left-handed drill bits. I was using those as well. They drill right through the metal. So worst case scenario, if the bolt don't come out, you'll get a nice hole and you got something to work with. Uh, so I didn't, you know, I took it to the wheel wire welder and just cleaned her up a smidge. It's it's by far not perfect, but it's like ten times better than it was. I don't know if I can do a before and after shot on here. I'll try. I hit this with the grinder too. It could really use a nice sanding. I'll see if I find some sandpaper lying around. Still dirty and still nasty, but better. Uh, I'm having trouble getting a lot of the stuff out of here. So the top's a little bit worse than the bottom. And then the skeg, if you remember, was just nasty. She cleaned up a lot nicer. She cleaned up pretty nice on the inside there. Still, just grease everywhere. I mean, you, if you look in those nooks and crannies, you'll see packed grease. <laughs> this thing was packed to the brim. Uh, but cleaned up decent. Uh, we can throw some spray paint on. It should clean up a lot. We're just waiting for a bearing carrier to come via eBay. Mine chipped here where the O-ring sits. And there's a cap here. So... O-ring goes in that way. I'm sorry, seal goes in this way. And over here is a flush. flush. You shouldn't be able to see through this. <laughs> so, uh, the new one, I'll show you the difference. But this one's been chewed up. I'm not sure exactly what happened. but Pretty nasty. I do have some spare water pumps lying around. Obviously, they're old. Shouldn't use them. I'll probably buy a new one. I keep saying. I keep saying I'm going to reuse the old ones if I get a chance. But really should only be used in a dire situation so not dire got time I'm trying to get these videos out I'm running out of uh you know it just takes time for everything to come so okay guys we're gonna leave you here uh we're gonna do a two-parter maybe even a three-parter with this 30 horsepower <clears throat> waiting on the ebay parts and uh i'm trying to get more videos out to you guys and by the time the parts come in it would probably take me another week or two just to get everything all together so we can put this video together so I don't know if I'll continue to do this again uh, you know leave me a comment let me know what you guys think uh, would you rather of uh, these 28 30 minute episodes or would you rather some quick updates every two minutes or would you rather wait four weeks and you know and I'll do one long video you guys let me know uh, what, what you prefer and we'll try to get a consensus going um, so thank you guys for tuning in Appreciate every one of you getting a solid one to two subscribers a day. Hopefully we can break breach the 350 mark very soon. Get our way to a thousand. Super excited about that. Tons more projects coming. I'm in the middle of ten more. So I do have the content. Just got to do the work and finish everything. So please stick around. Don't forget to mash that subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave me a thumbs up. We will see you... Uh, completion of this project.